joining me here on the Linda D. Low Show Girl Talk. Today, joining my Girl Talk squad, I have this beautiful young lady here. Her name is June Montgomery Lewis, and she's written a book called Born Again. Well, I'm June Montgomery Lewis. I'm the founder of an organization in the Bronx, New York called JCSC Group, where I mentor children between the ages of 10 and 15. And I wrote Born Again because I want to introduce myself to the world. Sex is one of the topics that everybody... Everybody. Yeah. Loves. Yeah. And, you know, we need it. We need yeah. it to grow and to understand ourselves, definitely. Yeah. And everybody wants to talk about it. Everybody wants to do it. Everybody wants to talk about it. So, and I'm always coming from the standpoint of... In the eyes of God, what, how does God, you know, view it? What does he, what does he want for our lives? And how, sh how should we go about this thing for real? Because honestly, the world is teaching us that we should sleep with anybody we want to. It doesn't matter. No strings attached. And like I said on my last show and the show before that is that basically, when you sex is the glue that binds the two, the two together, together and you just it's like you're stuck it's a soul and, tie yeah it's a soul, it's a soul tie. tie it's a it's a spirit tie it's a uh it's a, it's marriage. a, it's a bondage <laughs> exactly it's a marriage you know because people tend to think that marriage is only when i sign that legal document no it's when you have sex with that person right you become one with that person you right. attach yourself to different spirits right and things like that and it's definitely deeper than that Exactly. And so many people don't understand that. I used to work on a Christian campus and I worked in a girls um, dorm and they, we would talk often and sex is one of the topics that we would talk about all the time. And I would tell the girls what you just said in terms of it's deep, is a deeper connection. It is. It's, it's tying it you together. It's not just a physical tie, it's a spiritual tie. It's an emotional tie. It's a mental tie. It you just tied up, basically. You, and you're connected to that person. Yeah. And some people, like some guys, they think that um, it depends on how good they give it to you. I said it doesn't matter even if it's whack. Right. It's just the fact right. that it was a connection and you right. you tied together right. that way. Right. And if you keep doing it continually. Next thing you know, you're in love. You you lost perception of the relationship. <laughs> you, <laughs> have this, you have this this haze yeah, you start over to dream. your brain. Right. You start to dream. Right, and live in this fantasy world because sex really gloss over every All issue. the realities. Yeah. And so I would tell these girls this, and these girls were coming from Christian homes. Yeah. And the girls was like, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, this is... This is what it does. Well, sometimes in Christian home, they don't want to talk about sex. Right. It's like, you know, like in my book, I tell you, when I was being raised by my grandmother, it was like, you don't talk about stuff like that. You don't talk about your vagina. You don't talk about sex. All you know is that you don't do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why we are uneducated. Yeah. Because nobody wants to talk about it. It's shameful. Right. And embarrassing. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And... And like I said, hey, you know, we get we get caught up. We when we're bored, we get caught up, messed up, and knocked up. Definitely. And <laughs> and we could get into some crazy, crazy situations and just regret it. It is because it is like sad. you said, because we don't have that education to fall back on or to and we don't have on. the um the emotional stability to mm -hmm. know to come with what's going to come with sex because when you're young you're 14 you're 15 you want to experience and you think you just want to have a good time mm -hmm. you know you're just like i just want to enjoy myself i want to do what my friends are doing because at first it's like you know you're talking about your friends are talking about it how good it is and now you just want to see it for yourself or you want to take that relationship to a next level no. where you think he's going to like you more mm -hmm. and then you're not even like emotionally mature for what you're about to get bring into. yourself into mm -hmm. and like you said you get a baby and then the guy's like listen I, I never signed up for that like I was just having fun right <laughs> you right. know and then it's like damn I gotta raise this child you know right. it's real sex is real yeah yeah because again like you said you know the baby comes into the picture and even even the mom both people are like my I goodness this. right you know and when I remember I was doing a seminar um, recently and I talked about how in 1973, 
abortion became legal. Mm. And that was the time when abortion, of course, was at its highest. And usually when something, of course, becomes legal, that's when you're going to have the the residual of it being at its highest because before, yeah. people weren't doing it. But then also, they was doing it on the low. On the low. And so they yeah. weren't keeping accurate track of it or anything like that. And so that's even where abortion comes in. Where I always say that, you know, when in reading the Bible, people always think that back in the Bible times that they had child sacrifice and they would put the child through the fire. And I'm like, well, you know, really today, child sacrifice could be looked it's at abortion. as abortion because especially to, I guess, let's say, quote unquote, the God of pleasure, mm. where you sacrifice, you know, this child because you wanted to have a little bit of pleasure for a short period of time, a one night stand, a hit it and quit it, exactly. a booty call, or whatever you want to call it, Netflix and chill. Um, and so then you sacrifice that child for pleasure. That's sad when you think about it like that. Yeah. Because I never, you know, thought about it as like that's a sacrifice, but it is because you know we're creeping and we're having those one night stands, but then the child will be the representation of what you've been doing. Mm-hmm. So then you're like, no, I can't let nobody know that. You know, right. Especially if you come from a Christian home. Right. Because um, everybody has this perception that you're perfect. So, you know, you don't want nobody to know that you've been creeping right. and that you're pregnant and things like that. So, you're right. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I never thought of it like that. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Sure. So, even just just thinking about that, like that. Um, because, you know, a lot of people, abortions for different reasons. But yeah. I'm talking here. For us. Right. And- for specifically for pleasure purposes. And, yeah. Um, because there are a lot of, uh, in high school, mm-hmm. it's not just quote unquote adults, adult women, you know, yeah. in high school, in college, that's where a lot of, where you see a lot of it, because like you said, um, when you come from that Christian home, it's always that you have to look perfect. Yeah. And for some reason, I don't know where that mindset came from. I think but, it's just because they think that because you follow God that you should be sinless Mm -hmm. because as soon as you start to show that you sin then Mm -hmm. they're like you don't you don't love the lord you know you're not a christian right so that's why you know a lot of christians want to uphold this type of look like okay i'm not doing anything right which is sad (laughs) it comes down to anxiety and depression Mm -hmm. like what i talk about in born again because we're lying Mm -hmm. you know what i mean we're covering it up we're not perfect yeah yeah we have issues just like everybody else it's just that we have a blueprint. Our Bible is a blueprint of how we should live. I feel like that's like a right. a map. You understand? But it doesn't mean that we don't get lost. Right. Because even in the Bible, if people really read the Bible... They'll see that those are sinners. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They will see that no one in the Bible was perfect from day one yeah. except Jesus Christ. And that's the right. only reason he was able to um, overcome sin was because his connection with the father was so keen, they were so tight, yeah, so close that he was able to overcome sin. Yeah. Because had he not built that connection with the father, he would have failed just like everybody else. Yes. And there would be no eternal life. <laughs> and that's what I said, the Bible's direction. Yeah. Like, you know, it shows us how to live. But as us being human people that fall, we I just really want people to learn to love their self and mm-hmm. understand that you got issues. Mm-hmm. And don't try to hide it. Like, I don't know. Like, some people are saying the thing in Orlando. A lot of people think that happened. With the alligator? Be, not not the, the alligator other, thing. Oh, the shooting. The shooting. A lot mm-hmm. of people believe that, you know, people are carrying out those kind of crimes because maybe they have some hidden agenda in their self. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe... Like, maybe, this is rumor, maybe the guy might have felt connected to gays. And because of his religion, he couldn't be gay. So they believe oh, that so he, he went felt out. like he yeah. took out on them. And that's what happened to a lot of people when it comes to sex and stuff like that. It's like, like I said in my book, I was bullied because I was promiscuous. And it's like, those girls probably wanted to do what I was doing. But because they couldn't, the type, you know, they wanted, they hated it. Or they could have been doing it on the low. Yeah. And because they knew that you were this way, they just wanted to put on the front. Yeah. Because you want to, sometimes you hate the very thing that, that you are. You, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's the thing that really irks people the most. The very thing that you are. That's yeah. why children can get on parents' nerves so much. Yeah. Because they see so much of, um, of, of themselves in their child. Exactly. And so they try to, 
I guess, eradicate that thing as, mm-hmm. as quick as possible. Try to because, kill it. Right. Right. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So- And in my book, I discuss how I was an avid Little Kim fan. Like I <laughs> love Little Kim, and um, and then growing up in the nineties, you do see sex as empowerment mm-hmm. for women. You know, because we're raised, especially like I was raised in um an urban neighborhood, upstate New York, and I was always taught like as a woman to have a a vagina. You know, I don't want to say the word, but to have a vagina <laughs> is like we should never be broke. We should never not have certain things, mm-hmm. you know? So you start to look at your parts as a woman as if it's like, like your part is supposed to empower you. Mm-hmm. Like you're supposed to make sure you have the best sex. You're supposed to look the best. You always have to like have like this sexual thing about you. And then little Kim kind of like influenced mm-hmm. me a lot because mm-hmm. her music, you know, I used to be scared of the, you know, right. and I'm like, I'm thinking like, this makes me a woman mm-hmm. to be able to handle it. And I'm not afraid of it. I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm strong basically. Like right. I thought that that was strength. Right, and that, that's it now. Like when I think about it, you're right. You yeah. like, wait a minute, what yeah. was that? What that's not one. That that's sick to be like that strength. Yeah, strength to get AIDS. Yeah, but that that's what that's kind of what was being promoted, and I believe that because when little kid was out, I was only eleven. Okay, so I'm out there singing this, singing this, and next thing you know, it just started manifesting in my spirit. By twelve, I was promiscuous, mm-hmm. and, and it's almost like those lyrics. You didn't know exactly what they meant, but you yeah. were just singing it. Just like little kids. When I see little kids, I'm talking about toddler age. Yeah. And they're singing stuff and they're dancing and they're bopping and, you know, doing all that stuff. Have to I'm like, watch. wow. You know, they, do they really, they, they don't really know what they're saying. They don't singing. know, but you know, words are life. Mm-hmm. Words live. And it's like when you're saying this stuff, like the little kids, I'm in love with the cocoa. Next thing you know, they ain't really doing drugs. Mm-hmm. Like they don't even know they're singing about drugs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and it's, it's it's crazy because they try to use certain terms. Yes. <laughs> they're not gonna say, "Well, I'm in love with the cocaine." Yes. You know, they so try to make it sound they, cute, right? It mm-hmm. has to be cute. It has to be marketable. Exactly. So that people can buy into it. But if they really knew that, okay, well, Coco is cocaine. Uh, uh, what was the song out? This was years ago. I'm in love with Mary Jane. Yeah, we didn't know and that so, was right. <laughs> right. So, so and, the, and the crazy thing is that, because some people will say, well, you know, this crazy music just started. No, oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no boo-boo. It been started. They have been masking certain messages and songs since songs have existed. Yes. <laughs> and we're, our, our sinful nature is attracted to bad things. You know, like, we're attracted to music. Like, I used to listen to Too Short, Little Kim. Like, I was attracted to the most raunchiest music ever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the more you get to know God, the less of your ears could even handle that. You know, like, whenever I'm in my word and I start meditating in the spirit, I can't really even handle the music. Right. Whenever I start to become, uh, like, numb to the music, that's when you know that I'm flipping. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't know. It's like, the, the music and stuff is a, is a portal. We're pouring mm-hmm. it inside of our soul. And the next, you know, I'm 11 years old and now it's manifested. And now I'm act, I'm carrying out these acts mm-hmm. that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And so that's basically the culture that brought me into that. And then also, like I said, I, I, had, I was raised in a crack house. So my uncles that raised me, they used to watch porn a lot. So that exposed me to sex. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, what is that? What are they doing? Right. You know, I'm looking at the TV and I'm feeling some type of way. And I'm little, but I don't really know what my body's feeling. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I, I like this. I like right. this feeling. And then you start talking to your friends. Mm-hmm. You're not talking to adults. Right. You know, and your friends, of course, you know what kind of uh, advice that's going to be. Right. They give you they, they give you <laughs> what they have kind of interpreted for being their age. Yeah. Um, and we know that communication sometimes to a child doesn't always go over like we want it to because they can view it one way we may have been trying to do a give a particular message yeah. and they got something else that exactly <laughs> they perceive. right and so definitely because and that's one of the things that I'll, that I'm not going to say everybody does yeah. but a lot of people do they go to their friends to say oh well what's sex what's that how does it feel exactly what you know and so they try to get all these questions and the and, kids, just, and your friends don't know. Right. And that's another thing that made me want to do JCS. Because I want it to be able to be relatable to the children. Right. And hopefully save their lives. Like, I don't I don't want them to go down my path because 
a lot of people that went down my path don't make it out. Mm. You know, they become prostitutes, become drug addicts, sometimes die. Me and my uncle was just talking about by the time you're like 60, drug addicts, they die. You don't really see no old drug addict. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like that life is just spiraling out of control down. Right. Yeah, definitely so. It's spiraling out of control and too many people get caught up in it. Definitely. And although we can definitely make it out, you know, the scary thing is what about those who don't make it out? Yeah. You know, especially when we have friends, family members that we care about. Yeah. And we look at it like, you know, this person's life. We can see where their life is headed. Yes. We can see where they're going. Especially because when you become an adult, it's almost like you're no longer masking yeah. that you're sleeping around. Like you yeah, did you don't care. Were, right. When you were a teen. Yeah. So as teenagers, you know, middle school, high school, they're masking it because they don't want their parents to find out. They don't want their other friends to find out. And if they go to church, they don't want the church people to find out. But then when you become an adult mm. and people have the mindset of I'm grown, I do what I want. Exactly. I can do what I want. So talk to that in terms of take us to the next level in your book of when you became an adult or when the light really went off to let you know that, hey, you know what? I need to wake up. I need to change some things. I wanted more. I wanted more for myself. Like, I started... When you read the Bible, you start to develop self-esteem, you know? Because, like, you read the Bible and you, it's kind of like it shows you who you are, what you were created to be. Because the whole thing about it is that I was lost. I didn't understand what my purpose is, what, why am I here? And like we talked about earlier, when you're having sex, you start to attach yourself to these people. You start falling in love. And then you realize that nobody loves you. Like, they love what you can do. Right. You know, they love the way your sex feel. They love your body. And I was tired of, of guys using me because they thought I was pretty or using me for my body or if they thought that I had made good money, they were using me for my check. And I was really tired of that. And I really just one day, and it took me a long time to wake up. I didn't come to terms until I was like 28 years old. Mm -hmm. And I remember crying out and I said, God, I want more. I want, I want something real. I want somebody who's going to love me. You know what I mean? And then that's when I came into celibacy. That's when the Lord told me, June... The only way you're ever going to be loyal to anyone is if you're loyal to me. That's what God said to me because I didn't have no loyalty. Because the same way these men use me, I learned to use them. Mm -hmm. You know, they seen me as a piece of me. I started seeing them like that. Right. And, you know, and then I, I even developed the attitude. It's like, um, I don't need love. Mm -hmm. I don't need relationship. You know, all I'm looking for is, you know. Right. And right. It, it wasn't true. I thought it was real. But then it's not because you're not satisfied. Mm -hmm. Especially I have children. And then I, I would be dating a guy. And then the guy would be like, um. He don't want a family. He want to date me, but, but he, he doesn't want, want to be the father. You know, oh, get the dad for that. Knowing me and the dad have been broken up for years. Mm -hmm. So all of them things really, like, lay heavy on my heart because my children, that's me. We're one unit. You know right. what I mean? So I said, no, God, this can't be life. Like, I, this has to be more for me. Because I said, I'm a beautiful woman. I have a lot to offer. I shouldn't keep just giving my stuff like that. Like, it's just not fair. Right. So I fast and I prayed. I fast and I prayed. And that brought me to celibacy. But then, like, as you see in the book, I slipped. Because even going through celibacy is not easy. Mm -hmm. And it's Especially when you're used to the lifestyle of having sex. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. And I thought I thought I was good. I, I had met my husband. At the time, he was my boyfriend. I met him. And we were having a little online relationship. Because I thought that was easy because I didn't want to have sex with anybody. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to develop a deeper connection. So I'm like, okay, this is cool, you know. I'm falling in love with his soul. You know, we've never touched each other. Right. But then it's like that became to not be enough. After some years, I thought that the Lord was, I was being celibate because I wanted the Lord to bring me my husband. Mm -hmm. So I did it for the wrong, wrong reason. reason. So my advice is like, if you're going to be celibate, be do it for yourself. Don't try to bribe God. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to do this for you and you're going to give me that. That's yeah. not, it doesn't work like that. It didn't work for me. And that's what turned me around is because of that. But then I slipped. So what I realized is that we just got, it has to be an everyday commitment. Right. Because and an everyday renewal. Renewal. You remember what you said last week? You said that sometimes you get married, but those spirits are still attached yeah. to you. The adultery spirit, mm -hmm. the fornicating spirit. So even with getting married to my husband, I still carry that baggage mm -hmm. that we're still dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thankful to have a praying man that's like, listen, I'm going to pray with you, but we're going to have to get through this together. Right. And that's why I think it's important to know who you are so that when you do get in a relationship, you ain't got to lie. Mm -hmm. And be like, oh, I'm holy. I'm mm -hmm. saved. No. 
you're mm-hmm. dealing with a hoe. And we yeah. need God. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Nobody don't be wanting to talk like that. Right. Because then it's like, oh, you know, who's going to marry that? You can't make a hoe into a housewife. Mm-hmm. God can turn anything. Right. Around. around. You know? And, and I needed my husband to understand where I come from, what I'm capable of. Right. And like you said, God can turn anything around. Anything. Just as long as we submit ourselves to God. Yeah. Then he can take us and he can, again, born born again. Born again. He can renew us. He can, um, uh, a new creature as the Bible Amen. says. Amen. Everything. All things fast. Right. And it doesn't matter. But again, so many people, and like you said, they're not talking about it. People aren't talking about it because... I guess they're scared of the looks they'll get. Yeah. You know, even if, let's say that they left that lifestyle a long time ago. Yeah. They're still not really talking about it because of the looks they'll get. And maybe, and maybe it could be because they still feel guilty about it. Yes. And I know last week we ended the show on the forgiveness, how do you forgive yourself? And that's all part of it so that you won't carry around that baggage of feeling guilty that this is the way that you live. I I, I look at it like this, that, hey, yes, this may have been the way that I live, but I don't live like this anymore. And because God, uh, Jesus Christ came to save me and because he died for me and because he rose again, then I have a new life. And it's okay to... Let other people know about, not just about your past, but then also about your new life. Yes. Because that's where the hope really comes in. Exactly. To really get people like, you know, I can, I can, I can do this. I can be on this journey of purity. I can be Amen. on this journey of, of a new life. That's so important. Again, because, and, and I don't, again, I don't know why the church has to put on this mask. But they do. And so many people are sitting in the pews and they are just dying on the inside. I think some people are afraid to be transparent because there will be some people that won't receive you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Not everyone is able to receive born again. Mm-hmm. You know, some people have said, like, you know, everybody doesn't need to know everything mm-hmm. because everybody can't handle everything. Right. But this is for those people who need to know the truth. Right. You know, I don't want anyone to see me. A lot of people look at my life and say that it's a fairy tale. You know, because I I did uh, the little video for my husband when he came from Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, that's a fairy tale. No, this my story was a lot of pain. Yeah, behind it, right? You know, a you lot. See, of, you a see lot the of nail. Tears. It's yeah. like they, they see the nail, but you don't know what was then. Yes, and when you see people engaging in promiscuous behaviors. It's because they really haven't learned to love themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, they really didn't and haven't learned to love themselves. And like you said, to bring the hope. The hope is in building a relationship with God every day. Every day I have to listen to devotion. Every morning I either listen to Joyce Myers or I listen to the Bible or I listen to some type of song and I pray. This I have to start my day with that mm-hmm. every day. Because if not then I can't move forward. I need God every day. Mm -hmm. Every day I need to talk to him. I need to be able to hear his voice speak to me. And that's what keeps me, that's what keeps me, you know, holy for God and for my husband. Mm -hmm. So that I'm not out there, you know, being promiscuous. Because it's easy. You know, Mm -hmm. I work with nothing but men. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very easy to get caught up in um, fake relationships. But Mm -hmm. all we got to (laughs) remember is who loves you. Right. And if you don't have to have a man in your life, let God love on you. Right. And that's what I had to do. I had to let God love on me. Mm -hmm. And he taught me how to love myself. Mm -hmm. And and from that, again, you get that new life. You become whole. Yes. Instead of looking to other people to make you whole. And when we look to sex to make us whole or look to pornography to make us whole or look to all of these other things to make us whole, it really only deepens the void. Yes. Because it it takes away from us opposed to adding to us. And again, you know, a lot of people will come out of sex feeling used. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Like, like your friend said that was on a show last week. I don't know her name. She had the short hair. Okay. She, uh, she, yeah. yeah, she was saying how the that God will show you peace and then the enemy will show you happiness. Mm-hmm. And then so you'll look at the peace over there you're like, that look real boring. Because mm-hmm. I was feeling like that about my marriage. Because my husband is like the praying, like real, real. And I'm like, come on, Lord. You know, because I'm I'm live. I'm a live wire. So I'm like, my husband's going to be on. 
Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, and I thought that I wasn't sure if that's the life I wanted. Mm-hmm. But I have to really, I have to really pray and ask God, like, really lead me in this situation. Because then you see something over here that look real fun and real happy. You know, and then you think like, ah, oh, that looks nice. You know, I can have fun with that. Mm-hmm. But like you said, that's the deception. That's the distraction that the enemy want to show you. And, and and at the end of the day, it's destruction. Oh, yes. You know, because then it's going to be nothing but pain. Like you said, you done poured out everything just to find out that that person ain't even willing to take that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, I want all I just want to have fun. Mm-hmm. I just want to enjoy you. Mm-hmm. We don't have time for that. Right. You know, as women, women out there watching, we don't have time to be somebody's toy. Right. There's no way that you can go into any physical act with no strings attached. Exactly. Yeah, there, there may not be physical strings that you can see. But there's some spiritual but, strings. Right. There's some spiritual strings. There's time. Again, sex is the glue that binds the two together. Yeah. If you can see it or not. And I always say, friends with benefits soon become friends with deductibles. And <laughs> that's just how it goes. Yeah. Uh, because you can never give something without getting something back and what we get back is that emptiness and then we gotta think about what is a friend because i had one of those before friends with benefits and it's like are you you don't even care about me Mm -hmm. at the end of the day because the fact that i'm only your friend with a benefit shows me that you don't care about me at all because i'm only that i'm only your side piece yeah and but and oh my gosh i saw this post on uh facebook i'm sure you've probably seen some stuff too These girls, okay, they're wearing these t-shirts that says, I'm proud to be the side B. Side, (laughs) sad. And I'm just like, huh? (laughs) They made themselves to believe that because that's all they can get. Yeah. Yeah, so if if you feel like, you know, well, I really like him and that's all he's going to give me, then the low self-esteem is going to settle for it Mm -hmm. because there's no expectation. Oh, what am I worth anyhow? You know, half a man is better than none. That's terrible. Yeah. That's, that's what, really sad. And, and, and like you said, it's the fact that we don't love ourselves. We don't appreciate ourselves. We don't know who we be, who we belong to. We sure don't. And if we, we knew think, who we were. Right. <laughs> then we would definitely act differently. Yeah. And when I saw these posts of these women wearing these t-shirts, I'm just, I sad. just got the twisted face like, hmm? What is... Like, where, That's really where is they at? We need to take our girls back. That's yeah. very hurtful. Yeah. Because we're we're the daughters of a king. We're royalty. Mm-hmm. And the more we keep reading the word and letting it manifest in our heart and getting to know who we are, the more you're going to say, you know, I can't. I can't right. settle for that. I can't. I'm not okay with being a side chick. Yes. Even listening to you and myself, I'm thinking in my head, like, when you're in the world, you be so blind. Mm-hmm. Like, you think it feels so good. Like, oh, it just feels good. Because, you know, like, I have a little sister, and she's wow. And as soon as you tell her something, it's like, I don't have no self-esteem. I like this. I like what I do. Yeah. And it's like, they really feel good. But, you know, but I think, they don't know. I do think with a lot of them, even if they don't verbalize that they're hurting, I think at the end of the day, they know that they're hurting. I think that they know something is missing. Yeah. Because like you were saying, you know, in terms of when you sense. were younger, um, you had certain feelings, but you didn't know exactly what the feelings were. Yeah, that's what it is. So you knew something was off, but you didn't know what it was. And that's what I'm thinking about these these girls that can walk around and be the side, be proud, be proud to be of the it. side chick. And, you know, that they know at the end of the day, they know that something's off. Yeah. And again, just going back to building that brick wall and they just keep building, building and building and building and it gets thicker and thicker, wider and wider, taller and taller. That is sad. And they feel like, okay, you know what? I can sleep with this guy. I can sleep with that guy. And I guess for them, the goal to accomplish is to make sure they sleep with as many guys as they possibly can. Or to make sure they are the side chick. Yeah, I think they just want to feel important in that guy's life. You know, because sometimes you might see the married guy and, you know, and his wife is happy and they look happy. And to know that you're able to sleep with him makes you feel good. Right. Because it's like, "Mm, you thought you had him, but I had him. But Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just to know that. And that's sad because as women, we're so competitive. 
you know, we just want what the other woman has instead mm-hmm. of just, you know, waiting on the Lord, waiting on your own. It's just like, I just want him just because. And you might not even like him like that. Right. But just because he's just happy because. with somebody else. That's true. And I think that is definitely true. Because, it's like you said, yeah. <laughs> crazy. It is. Every it's day. demented, but it's, definitely, it's a fact, though. Yeah. Because no. they're looking at, like you said, they're looking at the wife and they're like, oh, you're happy, I'm happy too. Because I'm getting a piece of your pie and the great thing about it is you don't even know. And you know what another thing that psyches like? They like the fact that like all the arguments go to the wife. Like when that man is, is angry, he come home, he's talking crap. He's having a hard time. He's beating the kids. He's beating the wife. And then he's going out with the side piece and he's treating her like some type right. of queen. Right. You know, because she's like his safe haven. Mm-hmm. Somebody that he could just, you know, be cool with. There's no expectation. Right. She's There's not, no quote unquote strings. Yes. <laughs> you know? And that's the thing that I think a side piece likes. She likes the idea of, you know, mm-hmm. not having no issues, not having to argue, mm-hmm. not having to stress. She's like, listen, this is a stress free relationship. Right. I get a little bit of his money. But you know what did it for me as a side piece? Because I'm like, why I got to get the scraps? Because mm-hmm. I have bills too. I'm like, why well, I have to get a little bit of change after she get hers? Like, mm-hmm. I wasn't with it. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't see how somebody could like happily. <laughs> yeah. Like for the rest of that, you know, 30 years. You know, they you got know, five yeah. years for like oh, 30 yeah. years. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So it's like, I I'll see you after the holidays. I'll get the leftover from the check. I don't know what type of life is that, but right. I don't like that. Yeah. And and some people, some women do get fed up with it. And yeah. some some guys are side pieces too. That's <laughs> And that's the thing that I always tell people, you know what, STDs, pregnancies, most likely is the least of your worries, especially when you get um, spirits involved. Yeah, it is. That's when you begin, you come bound to that thing. And as much as you try to break free from it, you just, it's like you can't. I know, because I, I, and that's where I differ from your guest from last week because she doesn't believe that it's a, a um addiction i definitely mm-hmm. believe that it's an addiction because i mean this is something that you know you have to break free like i talked in my book about being uh demonically possessed and having them mm-hmm. pray on me you know the blood of jesus you know get out of her and it's like these spirits attach themselves to you mm-hmm. and it's fighting wrestling but you know what works for me is that i'm real with god right because before i used to like try to hide from the lord like cover up from him mm-hmm. but now i'm honest like i tell him how i feel mm-hmm. like god you know i'm feeling this dude I'm, I'm, i want to have sex with this dude mm-hmm. and that's how i talk to the lord right. so that he's able to help me right because and, that's and my so friend. many people try to so many people try to cover up and try to front with God and like he don't know right right exactly (laughs) like he doesn't like he doesn't know already yeah and and I don't know why they try to front and try to fake and try to just go before God like you know and all this it's like Like he don't know who we are like that's crazy right and that's what I was doing before is that you know I didn't talk about the things you know I didn't talk about sinful things with God or whatever, because I just thought that was inappropriate, <laughs> you know, for some and, reason. And, you know, I've never looked at it like that. And maybe people think it's inappropriate. Yeah, then. I thought it's inappropriate. Because, you know, like, some people with your mother, you're not going to be talking like, oh, my, you know, I'm about to go take that man down. Uh-huh. Like, some of us don't talk to our mother like that because of the respect. Like, we're afraid. But now I had to say, listen, if I'm not real with God, who can I be, be real, real with? with? Right. You know what I mean? Like, he's my savior. He's the one that can change me. Right. So he's the one I need to talk to. Right. So I tell him, like, what I'm feeling slutty or whatever i tell him lord you know you gotta help me right Right. now especially before mike came it was getting real bad i said lord like i'm feeling i need to do something now Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then you know the lord was able to speak to me and another thing that helps is that when we're talking to men we gotta really listen to what they're saying Mm -hmm. like if we they most of the men are honest Mm -hmm. from what they want yeah and and if we first we pray and then prayer opens our mind to the truth Mm -hmm. so that when we're talking to guys the first couple of um, sentences, we're able to be like, nah, right, red we ain't this. And we, we <laughs> tend to uh, ignore red flags, both mm-hmm. women and men. We tend to ignore red flags. We kind of know, and we do know, that you know what, this person isn't good for me. Yeah. But because of our need to want to be filled, mm-hmm. we think that, okay, and this is the thing that too many people 
fall on. They think that they can change the person. Somebody. Yes. Facts. You're right. And so they feel like, okay, well, I'm going to get into this relationship with them. And we're going to be good because I'm going to pray for them real hard. I'm going to put some holy water on them, yes. some oil. Like, I'm going to take like them I'm to church. I'm going to get the Holy Spirit. Right. I'm going to take them to church. And they're going to change. And so we fall in that mindset. And honestly, the real deal is we end up changing. Mm. Because we try so hard to, change, to change this other person. When in the end, if we don't leave, then we end up changing. You're right. That's crazy. We got to start listening to the Lord. Yeah. You know, he has our perfect, not perfect, but he has our husband. He has our man. He has our future. And we really got to start listening to him. I always talk about how sex isn't just, it's, it's not just the act that keeps us bound um, it's purity overall. We have to start not not telling ourselves or telling others, well, don't have sex. Because telling people that it doesn't it doesn't work. Yeah. Because the Bible doesn't teach us not to just not have sex. The yeah. Bible teaches purity. Okay. And with purity is a whole mind shift that has to happen. A whole life shift that has to happen. With not having sex, a person could probably just go with the routine of making sure that they don't have sex. Yeah. But they still may be watching porn. Or they mm -hmm. still may be reading those particular books that make them feel or some masturbating. kind of... Right, or because masturbating. That's what I was dealing with yeah. my celibacy. Yeah, so let's just talk about purity and what that is. Because for me... I know that purity is, it starts in the mind. The whole, I know for me, when I had to come out of that mindset of fornication, that I had to throw out stuff. Yeah, I had to get rid of books. That. I had to get rid of movies. I had to get rid of certain music because again, that thing is just in your mind solid and it leads you down that path. Yeah. And some people will, like I said last week, some people will say, well, I don't need to get rid of that stuff just to make sure I don't, you know, have sex again. But honestly, when we're trying to walk towards a certain goal, we have to put certain things in place in order to get there. Clean house, you and, know? you know, the Bible talks about how we should sweep our house clean and the demons leave out, but don't leave it empty. Mm. Because not that I only get rid of stuff, but I had to fill my spirit with God too. Amen. And sure so is. I had to be able to say, I had to, you know, I literally set aside time where I woke up early in the morning and I made sure that I was going to get my time in with God, like you were saying. You have to. That I'm going to read the word, I'm going to pray, I'm going to make that connection. And so then, so as I was dishing out or pushing out those Eric Jerome Dickey books mm -hmm. you know I had to put the Bible in there when I was um, um, swapping out for Little Kim I had to replace it with um, some Fred Hammond or something yeah, yeah. you know and when those those movies and all that stuff it's like I had to not just get rid of stuff we'll replace but it. I had to replace it with something because if we don't replace it then, idle time and then you're gonna go back yeah and then when you get rid of those demons he gonna come back with mad more right <laughs> you know right. you gotta go from okay first you just had sex addiction now you bisexual yeah you know because they're just gonna be bringing yeah. mad stuff yeah. in there the demon come now it's not just that one demon yes, but he, he come with pookie he, he like, come with ray ray like, listen, he got, come with little man he, they come there. with everybody yes. and and so because his thing is that, one, I'm mad because you kicked me out in the yes. first place. So when I'm coming back, I'm coming back strong. And I'm going to take you out. That's yeah. his goal. Mm -hmm. His goal is to take you out. So I believe mm -hmm. my purity came when I started allowing the Lord to use me for my purpose. Yes. Because my purpose is to inspire. So once I let him in, then he started to bring out of me what was in me. Mm -hmm. And he, the thing is that he allowed you to share yes your life and so many people again like i said in the beginning so many people they may have lived that life but they don't want to share it with yeah. others in order to help them come out of it yeah in order to help keep them away from it they 
for some reason, they, they just don't want to share it. Yeah, some people say they just want to bury it. Right. Like, you know, let leave it alone into the past. You know, so, some people don't like that. You know, keep bringing up old stuff. But for me, it, was, it liberated me. Mm-hmm. It, it made me like, free. It's healing. Right. Yeah, it was healing. A healing process, um, feeling free, and just being able to, again... I know who I used to be, but dad on, I know who I am Amen. now. And that's what God, that's what he wanted to birth out of me. Because without becoming pure, I was unable to write. Because even when I did fall, I stopped writing. Mm-hmm. Like when I fall, I stopped writing, I stopped praying. Like I say in the book, every time the enemy gets a hold of me, the first thing he does is cover my mouth. Mm. Because that is my weapon. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing he do, cover my mouth. I can't pray, I can't talk. And I kind of just, like, isolate myself from everyone. And that's a shame because my purpose is to speak. Mm-hmm. My purpose is to breathe life through through communication. Right. So I believe as you come towards God and to get pure is when he shows you who you really are. Right. And you can start throwing that other stuff aside. Right. So let's talk to the person who is, let's say, in their 20s, in their 30s, and they really want to... They really want to get out of this thing. They want to know, well, how can I live for God? I've been doing this thing uh, for so many years. And I just want to know, how is it that I can break free too? I would say don't try to do it yourself. Don't try to start doing things. Because the first thing we do is like, okay, I'm going to cut this guy off and I'm going to do that. Let the Lord in. Let him in. First and foremost, get on your knees and surrender. Throw your hands up and say... Lord, I give myself away. I give myself to you. I don't know what to do, and I need you. And then make it, make it, you know, your lifestyle. Pray, talk to him, mm-hmm. get to know him, read the word, and you will see yourself changing. All of a sudden, when you swear, you're gonna, like you're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have said that. You know, you're gonna start feeling convicted. Right, right. You know, you will change. You will change gradually because as you allow the Holy Spirit in. He'll, he'll work in you mm-hmm. and he'll change you. That's one of the biggest mistakes we make is we want to change ourselves. So, mm-hmm. We say, no, I'm not going to church until I quit this. I can't go to church because I'll burn the church down. All of that is a lie. Right. You know, because if we're waiting for ourselves to change, we're never going to change. Right. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants to keep you in bondage and slavery, mm-hmm. you know, to your own flesh. So I would say, worry about getting to know God. Don't mm-hmm. worry about what you're addicted to. Don't worry about your sex. Don't worry about your cigarettes. Don't worry about worry about God. Right. Put your mind on Him. Start to pray, talk to Him, cry out to Him. Mm-hmm. We're so afraid to cry. Yeah, and like you said, we're afraid to be real with Him. This is what I enjoy. This is what I want to do, God. Yeah. So, and, and like you said, you have to start there because when we don't start there, then we try to do it in our own strength. In our own strength. And then when we can't do it, then it's like a diet where we quit. Right. We don't see no results. Oh, I didn't eat uh, this week and I ain't lost no weight. So, matter of fact, I'm going to leave that alone. That's what we do to the Lord. We be like, oh, I've been, you know, I stopped. Well, I stopped smoking a cigarette and you still ain't coming to change nothing. Right. You know, and that we God doesn't work like that. We can't just be bribing him. He's right. not like a little meal to throw in the right. microwave. Like you really just take your time and get to know your savior. Your you know your the love of your soul. Get mm-hmm. to know him. Because mm-hmm. there's no love. There's no greater love than God. Right. You know, and we really we need him. So get to know him and let him change you. That's right. what he's done for me, and he's still working on me. Right. And and everybody. Mm-hmm. He's definitely still working on everybody. And basically renewing everyone daily. Yes. Um, and again, like you said, when we surrender to God and we, when we begin to fill ourselves with God, we begin to see things the way he that sees. God sees them. Yes. And that's what he intends for us. Right. And we begin to appreciate the things that God wants us to appreciate. So many, so many people are afraid that if they get too close to God, then they can't have fun. Yeah. If they get too close to God, then they probably never get married. They and, lose themselves. Right. I used to think that too. I used to think like, you know, as I'm getting to God, I'm losing myself. But actually, he introduced me to me that I didn't even right. know, mm-hmm. you know, who I was supposed to be. And I don't feel whack. Like, I don't feel like I'm less um, important. I'm a better woman now. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a way better woman than I was. And I see a bright future where as long as God is in it, it's mm-hmm. bright. Mm-hmm. Once you walk away from him, Pure destruction. Right. Pure darkness. Right. 
And that's so, again, so key. So for you ladies, you guys out there who are just trying to come out of that lifestyle that has held you for so long, you God can definitely bring you out of that lifestyle. Again, surrender yourself to him. Be real with him. Let him know that, you know, God, I'm struggling with this. Mm-hmm. I like this. I want this. And just fill yourself with him every single day, praying, reading his word, listening to inspirational music that is going to uplift you. Um, Yes, reading inspirational um, books and everything like that, listening to people who can really help you get through. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, when you have sold yourself out to God, he will definitely deliver you from whatever it is that you're Amen. in. And then years later, months later, mm-hmm. you'll look back to say, wow, you know, you begin to notice certain changes. You'll look better too. Like, I remember when I started to get closer to the Lord, everybody said, you know, you got this glow, nope. this radiance. Yes. And they were like, who's the guy? And I'm like, God. You know, they couldn't believe it. They thought I had a new boyfriend. And I right. said, no, this is Christ. Like, this he, is what he he's loved me, in my you know? Because it's like when you go to bed at night and I say to my book, I literally could feel like as if I was being held. Mm-hmm. And that that's how close I had gotten to the Lord. Yeah. Definitely so. So make sure that you all do that. Start there. And you we are here. at the end of our show. Definitely get your copy. Where can you get a copy? Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. That's all I know for now. It's my, uh, <laughs> it's my other sites, but I'm really familiar with Barnes and Nobles and Amazon. Yes. Yeah, so definitely get your copy. Check out her story. And how Christ just restored her. Join me for Ladies Night Out, an after work rooftop party going on July 28th in DC. (laughs) (laughs) So we'll be live with all the ladies. We have some great vendors to shop. Check me out at www.lindadlow.com. Follow me on social media. Pick up my book, which is titled Dating Smart, Nine Tips to Transform Your Crazy Dating Life. You can grab that on Amazon.com. I've been listening to the Linda D. Lowe Show, Girl Talk. Thank you all so much. Bye.